It all starts with a dead girl. No, seriously, that's how this game starts, with a dead girl. <laughs> Today I'm becoming one with the spirit world. Hey Chavis, how come they ain't killing us? We're in the spirit world, asshole, they can't see us. <laughs> in the first Xbox Series X and S exclusive by Bloober Team called The Medium. Is this third person psychological horror game accessible for disabled players? Let's find out. I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here, if the link is not there, click the link in the description down below to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. First of all, thank you to Xbox for providing a code for me to review this for you today. I do have to preface this by saying I am terrified of horror games. I don't really like horror movies in general either. I find them like way too creepy and scary, so I usually avoid them at all costs. Even when I saw the first trailer of the medium back in May of 2020, I thought it seemed a little too scary, but when more and more details of the game's dual world gameplay and its story setting came out, it kind of piqued my interest and my curiosity. And boy, oh boy, did I fall down the rabbit hole with this game. I have no idea if I can even get out. <laughs> this literally might be my personal game of the year. Let me explain. Before I dive into the accessibility, I do want to give my general thoughts on the game. I'm going to try not to show a huge amount of footage of the game because I would recommend going in blind, you know, pardon the pun, <laughs> because this game does its best storytelling work when you don't know what's going on. I would say though, to set up the review, you play as Marianne, who has the psychic gift of being able to see into the spirit world as a medium. Set in Krakow, Poland in the 1990s, you are trying to solve a haunted mystery as you explore or the real world and at points at the same time exploring the spirit world to solve puzzles and uncover the mystery. This game does something really cool that was touted as using the next-gen power of the Xbox Series X and S, and this is the first time we really got to see it in action. You are literally in dual realities at the same time. It's kind of like loading two games at the same time and the same movements you make in one are mirrored in the other. It's kind of like, you know, like in that split screen format that essentially like a lot of like multiplayer games have, um, but essentially it's the exact same movements you're making, but in two separate games and worlds. It's really kind of cool how they were able to make this work. It's fascinating how you weave back and forth seamlessly from what I can see with little lag or drop in frame rates or loading of textures. It's a creepily gorgeous game that draws you in with an amazing story as well. Again, I, 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 like I said, I don't like horror movies, but this one is enticing. If you're concerned about jump scares, there was one so far in the five plus hours I played nearish are kind of around the beginning. Um, it does rely more on its creepy and disturbing factor though to kind of make it add to its scariness. It does have a few scary sequences where you're either running away from something or trying to be silent and getting away from something. So keep that in mind as you play. The gameplay is actually really quite interesting in that it's in a third person fixed camera akin to actually kind of like old school Resident Evil games where you walk into a room and the camera is fixed to one spot as your character moves around. I didn't really play any of these types of games in the past, so it did take me a little bit to get used to, and it had a bit of a like a little bit of learning curve. But once I did, I started to marvel at how the camera was placed in a very cinematic style that at times also moves with you as you walk through hallways or up stairwells. It's really cool and warrants a lot of discovery as you interact with the room and find notes, items, etc., to uncover more of the story. Again, as I mentioned, I won't touch on story so as not to spoil it for you, but honestly, this story has me hooked. Even right now, I literally want to go back in and play what's and just like, you know, figure out what's happening. I'm falling more and more in love with this game than I actually originally expected. And the storytelling is masterfully told and seamlessly moves through the unique dual reality gameplay. The music is also fantastic, which is great as one of the composers is the same composer from the Silent Hill games. If that entices you, I know what you're thinking and yes, it's that kind of a game. So all in all, when I say it's my personal game of the year, it honestly is from that perspective. The story, the art, the gameplay, it's the most, 
it's it's kind of the most amazing game I've played so far in a while that just like I am really excited to be able to jump back in and keep playing. It isn't the most accessible game I've played, but it has some honestly great features. From the very beginning of the game, you have several options to choose from before getting into the main menu. First off, it does present you with two warnings, one for photosensitivity and trigger warnings. The photosensitivity warning is valid as there are several times when the game splits into the dual realities point that have a lot of light patterns and flashing lights, which unfortunately you cannot tone down or turn off. And it flickers really, really fast too. I've actually found it jarring myself when it happened to me. So please play this game with caution if you are triggered by any of that. The trigger warnings also are more for the theme aspect for the storytelling purposes. Bloober team does treat them seriously and does say some players may find certain themes triggering. So keep that in mind as well. Before getting to the main menu, you can set the brightness as well as a variety of subtitle options, such as subtitle size from tiny, small, default, large, and huge, a subtitle background option to turn off transparent or solid, speaker name, speaker color, and bold text. Once you set those options, you are then taken to the main menu where you can go into the settings if you like before even starting the game. As I mentioned, you have a lot of subtitle options in the game, which is really awesome and you love to see it. These should honestly be the default in all games. Only thing that would have made the subtitles in the medium better was that if they had directional visualization and also full captions of all dialogue and sound effects, as there are certain things that are kind of missing uh, in that kind of build out the environment and that would have immersed you more into the creepy environment for deaf and hard of hearing players. There are other audio options to adjust the individual volumes of the master volume, music, voiceover, and sound effects with the ability to adjust the audio profile from cinematic stereo and headphones. Even though there are no visualizations for sound, there are times when dialogue tells you a sound effect is happening, like a bell or a radio, but that mostly is for plot point purposes than in an immersion thing. It's just a good old fashioned haunted hotel. Calm your ass down and answer the bell. The only time where a directional sound cue is active is when you go into insight mode and a color-coded arrow will point in the direction of the thing you're trying to sneak past. It is pretty small and can be hard to see, and the arrows do get more into a redder color when the closer that the thing that is being chasing you or you're trying to sneak past comes near you. Um, so that's the only time where color is a factor, but the directional arrow is still there, um, which, and it also, like I said, is hard to see, which honestly, like I'll talk about in a minute. This is where actually the accessibility is a bit of a mixed bag in regards to blind accessibility. There is no direct blind accessibility in the medium other than the bold text and subtitle size options. The game does try its best to make items to interact with be as high a contrast as possible, but the highest size is the default size, and unfortunately, it's a little too small for me. The drawback is because of the fixed camera angle, the little white dot where you can interact with a part of the room is just that, a little white dot. I often had trouble solving the puzzles because I didn't see the little white dot to tell me I can interact with something. Also knowing what button to push was difficult to see as it was hard to tell the difference between X and A, which you'll be pushing a lot. A key trick I learned early on, which was intentional by the devs part, was anything you interact with in the real world, you hit X. In the spirit world, you hit A. It would be great if your controller could vibrate slightly when you are near an object, but the controller will only vibrate if you are in insight mode and you are near an, an objective. When you do interact with objects, you do sometimes pick up a lot of pages to read throughout the game. They are actually pretty cool and adds to the story and kind of expands out the world of the medium, And but they are in a very cursive faded font. But there is the ability to hit Y to read the page and that brings up the text in a readable font. Only drawback is, is there is no narration of that text. As Marianne is narrating the game, it would have been great to hear her read it out or have the character who wrote the text read it out loud, but I can understand the budget and resource restrictions on that where it can cost a lot per word sometimes for a voice actor to be able to record all that text. The camera angles while adding to the old school feel of the gameplay can be problematic at times when you are exploring an area. Often I'm not seeing a door or hallway as it's obscured and not easy to see. So I'm often wandering around a room several times wondering how to get out or move forward and it's because I really couldn't see the exit. 
I'm gonna give mild spoilers for this part, but another thing that was difficult was there there is a creature that is after you in several times throughout the game. In the spirit world, you can see it, but in the real world, it comes up as a transparent apparition. He does walk in a predictable repeating pattern, so that helps, and there is sound to kind of sort of direct you where you should go, but even then, the directional sound isn't super great, um, and it can be difficult because it's usually focused in the room that you're in. It is a neat effect to be sure, however, it is really difficult to see where the creature is, and it's hard to tell if it's walking away from you or towards you in that sort of looping, repeatable pattern. Using inside gives you a directional arrow, as I mentioned, but it can be small and hard to see. Default is you have to hold the inside button, but in the options you can set that to toggle instead, so you're not cramping your finger when in insight mode. You can also see a slight highlight around the creature in insight mode as well, which is handy, but it's not as bright as it is for other objects, as they have a brighter glow around them. The game doesn't intentionally make it difficult for blind or low vision players to play, it just doesn't have a lot of features we would need, which I can totally see as deliberate choices from the devs because it would have negated some of the puzzle solving. It sadly is a difficult balance to make when puzzle solving is the key part of the gameplay, and any of the options I just mentioned would have been seen as a way to cheat the puzzle. Obviously, it isn't from an accessibility standpoint, but I have, in, I've been, I have been in conversations where that comes up as a valid concern, both from devs and other advocates. I don't know what the answer would be in Bloober's case to be able to kind of accommodate that, but I do hope that maybe these options could be added in the settings where we can turn them on or off as need be, especially when the puzzles can be difficult to solve because of a disability. What I found that's actually great about the motor accessibility is that there actually is a lot here to customize your experience. You have full controller remapping, sensitivity and inverted controls. You can set toggles or holds on insight and for holding your breath, as well as the ability to turn on events auto completion. It's kind of like quick time events where you can be able to kind of auto complete them, but it does more than that. It not only auto completes quick time events, but it also helps when finding echoes, which is when you interact with an object and you use your thumbstick to rotate take that object to find a bright crack that you find in that spot for the echo to activate. This is handy as a lot of story elements and plot points are delivered via those echoes. A majority of the time you'll be using the left thumbstick and the interact buttons of X and A the most. You are using all of the buttons on the controller, sometimes at the same time, but mostly for me when I was hitting buttons at the same time, it was because I forgot I could set one of those buttons to toggle instead of hold, and I would only need to be holding one button at a time. I do not know what the remapping is like on the PC version, as I only played on console, but you have more options for remapping on a mouse and keyboard than you do on a controller. So in closing, honestly, with even with its shortcomings and accessibility, and there are parts of the disability spectrum that are not going to be able to play this game, however, the beauty of the medium is that it is going to be on Xbox Game Pass for both console and PC. So if you have Game Pass, you can play this day one and try it out for yourself. If it doesn't work, I get it, it's disappointing, but you can also delete it without feeling like you're wasting money. If Bloober Team does add accessibility features down the road with future updates, that's even better. I still personally would recommend getting it, and Game Pass will allow you to download a game again if that's the case. Like I said, it's so far my game of the year for 2021. It's all the things I like in games. Its story is engaging, the gameplay is captivating from a technical and artistic standpoint. I honestly do wish it had more accessibility as it would have been a great game to be able to play for those with disabilities. And I understand that only certain people with disabilities are gonna be able to play this game. But that's honestly okay. I hope that Bloober Team does add more accessibility later on. But for me, I'm actually still enjoying it anyway, even with the difficulties of my own disability. So I would still recommend trying it out. That's it for me. If you have any questions or comments about the medium, let me know in the comments down below or hit me up on Twitter at Steve Saylor. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified as to when new videos come out, make sure you hit the bell notification icon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, I remain obediently yours. Bye.